piece of shit. This movie was a piece of shit. I don't even... How do they keep getting worse? Like... Fucking New Moon. I, Eclipse. No, the third one. Eclipse. Eclipse was the third one, right? That was one of the worst pieces of shit I ever seen in my life, and this was worse. So I take it you liked it. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> I, I, I. The thing is, you knew it was going to be a crap movie. Going. No, 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 no. Because, okay, okay. For those of you who don't know, I needed someone to like be here just to make sure I don't do something stupid. So that's why I've got Linkara and Juwario via conference call right now. But, okay, don't give me this thing where, like, oh, you knew it was going to be bad when you walked in the door. Okay? That's partially true. But, <laughs> partially, I so... I haven't slept in 36 hours. Oh, I'm sorry. And I so didn't want to go see this movie. Because the last three years... Scarlett and I would go to see these movies, and they were like the they were like the best date nights we ever had. Was was these fucking movies because they were so fucking funny. They're they're fucking hilarious. So like they're they're bad, but I love the Twilight movies. But like there was nothing redeemable about it. It wasn't even funny. Eclipse and this piece of shit. This wasn't an, an enjoyable kind of bad, like... The no! Movie. No, nothing happens in this fucking movie! Nothing happens! Hang on, so I... I, I, I seriously have an emergency store of booze. Like... <laughs> I don't I don't drink. I, I don't. Like, you could... You, you, you've probably seen, like, everyone's gone drinking at the crossovers and shit like that. Like, I, I don't drink. I... I, I I just not a. I never got into it, but like, I keep some around for guests, and because like, there might be a day when I I need a I physically need a drink, and this is like I. Oh my, well, oh my I don't drink either, God. so. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, well, the, poor man. <laughs> this was. For, you know, those, this was the time that, uh, this was the movie that, uh, you know, Bella, and kind of solidified Bella's relationship uh, with what's-her-face, with what's-his-face, right? Edward. Yes. They got married and screwed. Yes. And, like, what you just said <laughs> took five seconds. If you were making a movie, hang on, I need to pour it. Well, let's see what I got. I got, I got the Kraken Black Spiced Rum, and I got Canadian Club Whiskey. And I don't the think I want you to go to the Kraken route. I don't think I'm gonna like either of these because, like I said, I've never had whiskey before, and I've only had rum a couple times. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll unleash the Kraken. Oh, let's see. Let's just smell it. Actually, it smells pretty good. Hang on. Yeah, if you. If you've never had whiskey before, be careful. <laughs> well, I, uh, the one time we had it at Robert Walker's house, they gave us the good stuff, the whiskey. Yeah. And it was like really old whiskey. And he's like, this is the, he's like, this is the good stuff. And I go, really? And it, it smelled and tasted like paint thinner. Then it's good stuff. And I'm, <laughs> he's, and I'm like, oh, it tastes like paint thinner. And he goes, I know, right? It's the good stuff. I'm like, <laughs> So hang on, I'm going to take a shot of this. This rum here. Okay, really? God help me. That's actually pretty oh, good. Oh, the Twilight movies. I, I shouldn't have been surprised that they split it into two movies because they because. Oh, that's that's, that's books. That. Okay, uh, getting back to my point. The the fact that this leads into it actually. The fact that it's in two movies. The Twilight Saga, a phrase you cannot possibly say with a straight face. It cannot be. It's not a saga. It's about a horny chick who wants to fuck a vampire. That's it. <laughs> but there's an epic war between werewolves and vampires. No fucking epic. All right, what you said 
She gets she gets married and screws a vampire. Five seconds it took to explain that. If you were shooting a movie, you could not have padded this premise out any more than they did. Like, okay, I, I took notes. Hang on. I, I was in the theater and I took notes. Um, the first minute of this movie, Jacob takes his shirt off. Like, they don't even wait. Like, <laughs> he, he, like no, he gets an invitation to the wedding. He just is like, oh, I'm so mad. And he rips his shirt off. That's how he's actually, hang on, I gotta rip my, this is, this is, this is my movie shirt. What the hell do these people see in this woman? I, I, I know. Like, she's, okay, hang on. She's a sociopath. All right, so, like, she gets married, and they go to Rio, and they fuck. And they fuck a lot, okay? And that is the first 45 minutes of the movie. Just them having sex and doing... Yeah. No, okay, mm -hmm. like, 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 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes of the wedding, and then they go to Rio, and they fuck. And that's the first first 45 minutes of the hour of the movie. That's it. That's all that, that's all that happens. I swear to God. Like, you we, know, when I worked at Barnes & Noble, they actually had like a midnight release thing for the book, it, the book it's based on. And like, there was oh. like, like, they had like a schedule of events. You can't have for, rum. Like, you know, a mock wedding ceremony for these two. Puppy, you can't have rum. This is for me. This is daddy's medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Oreo feels your pain and wants to share it with you. Oh, it's actually really good. <laughs> oh. All right. Oh. So the wedding. Wedding. We watched the whole wedding. Like, if if I were to go to a wedding and tape it, that's that's what happens. Like, we watch them get dressed. We watch them have the rehearsal. We watch them walk down the aisle. We watch them take their own vows. We watch them trade rings. We watch them look longingly to each other's eyes. We watch the reaction of the parents. We watch the reactions of the schoolmates. And then, when they get... That's very sweet. There were people crying in the aisle. There were women. I could hear them crying. It was that beautiful. It was that... And then, and then, we go to the reception. And it's like the reception was filmed in real time. I have been to shorter wedding receptions than this. And you know what? This was actually the best part of the movie. I, I really liked the wedding reception scene, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, because this was the one scene that the characters were actually clearly having fun and exchanging funny dialogue and smiling. Four fucking movies. Opposed to just uh, standing around being emo and yeah, being like, four fucking I love you. Yeah, yeah, four fucking movies. These characters have never cracked a smile, not one time. Yeah. And finally at the wedding reception, Jesus Christ, that's a lot of booze. Finally at the wedding reception, they're, they're actually like telling jokes and like making, making, being funny. And, and, like, the only character that is all, at all sympathetic in this whole fucking movie is Mustache Dad. <laughs> the, the Billy Burke, I think his name is. Yeah. He's the only guy who you can actually see written plain on his face the pain and anguish of having this diabolical fiend for a daughter who lies to him constantly and who is clearly just ruining the family. Like, right before his eyes. And so, like, but he's, at the same time, he, his character is portrayed as being completely powerless. And he knows it. So, like, his entire performance is just him, like, shrugging and going, I know. What, I, I, I got nothing else to do. Like, sorry, like, I, God. Okay, so, like... It, it's it's actually not the, the wedding reception was actually not bad because for once I was enjoying myself and then we go to Rio because they, they Edward wants to take her on a honeymoon and he doesn't tell anyone where it is because that's normal <laughs> but they go to Rio and they they where there's a lot of sun well you say they go there at night they, no they go there at night I don't know how they catch a flight <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> 
So they go there, and right, okay, this is another thing I have to confront right away, because you start to notice this almost immediately. The music. The music in this movie is probably the worst orchestral score I've ever heard in my life. Ever. It's... Now, now why is that? Because it's... Okay. Let's say, do you know anything about music, Lewis? Uh, most. Uh, not like, like... Lots and lots of things, but I used to play violin. Okay, okay, that, that's good, that's good. If I put a piano in front of you and said, just play some notes that sound nice, and you were like, do, 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 and like you, you had like ten minutes to like just kind of noodle on the piano, and then you kind of came up with something where you were just kind of like tapping keys, like one key at a time that was kind of nice sounding, that's what this, that's what this fucking soundtrack is. It's like, it's like me, it's like me, like if I, if I had five minutes to come up with an orchestral score and I had just a piano and I pulled the score right out of my ass, that's what this Oreo, that's, it's, it's, it, it's so minimalistic and shitty. It's, it really is like a junior high schooler wrote it. No, shit, fuck. A, a junior high schooler could have come up with something better than this. And, and then, there's the montages. Because, the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn Parts 1 and 2, this epic could not be contained in one movie! Mm -hmm. Oh, God damn. Yeah, because then you've got to go to the birth of the demon child. This movie is so fucking padded. Hang on, i got to take another drink. <laughs> I was going to say, so yeah, the first part oh, is them yes. <laughs> and, uh, and the second one is oh. supposed to be... <laughs> what's going on over there? <laughs> I'm drinking progressively more rum. <laughs> I'm not a drinker, as you can tell. I'm going to switch the whiskey. Bad idea. There we go. Canadian Club. I gotta smell this. Hang on. I gotta smell this. Oh, this smells foul. Hang on, I'm gonna try some. Kind of like the movie. Oh, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try a little bit. I'm gonna try a little bit. In a minute. It looks like this. <laughs> okay, so. Where was I? Oh, the padding. Uh, the pad the, the, the padding. score ever. Yeah, yeah, the padding. Okay. So this movie is so fucking padded with montages, and the montages are either set to the god-awful orchestral score, or they're set to, like, the worst I've never heard in my life pop music in the world. It's so shitty. It's like, I, I don't know what kind of fucking Boston basement they pulled this pop music out of, and they set their montages to it, but they also make montages to the stupidest fucking things ever. Hang on, I wrote them down. Uh, 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 oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 I go back to the wedding here. There's a scene at the wedding where they start, like, they say, "You may now kiss the bride," and like Edward and Bella just start like blatantly making out in front of the entire, entire, in front of the entire audience. Like, they practically get to second base in front of the audience. That's so not appropriate for a wedding, right? <laughs> like, you know, you kiss the bride, you give her a kiss, and then it's over, people applaud, and then it's over. Like, you don't fucking ram your tongue down her throat. Well, consider how horny these two have got to be. Exactly, and that's the... Exactly, these two are... Well, Bella. That's, that's my whole point about Bella being a character. And this is a whole, a whole misconception about the romance between these two. She's not in love, she just wants to fuck. Really? That's it. So, like... I don't know, I don't know. This is, this is why this relationship is not going to last. She's going to re regret it the rest of her life. If this were real life and not just some really, really, really crappy romance <laughs> story. Okay, so, yeah. They, they, actually, they first go to Rio, and then they leave Rio to go to an island called Isle Esme, which is an island that Carlisle owns. The fucker owns an island off the coast of Brazil. And they're just See, now why, mentioning this. Why would you leave Rio? But no, he owns an island. Right? 
why would he even, if you can be alone on an island and have nobody bother you and yeah. have all the animals that you wanted to drink, why in the world would you go to Washington? Yeah, well, go to Washington and then make yourself as grand a spectacle as possible. Yeah. Like, I can understand their need for human companionship, like they want to go to school and stuff like that, but like, go to Brazil! You know, you can, like, sail from your island and visit a bar in Rio if you want to... You don't need to, like, stock high schools and do that kind of thing. So, like, okay, so the first montage that really drew my attention was, like, okay, so they're married, and they go to the mansion, they look at the bed, and they're, like, they're kind of nervous, they don't want to, like, just jump right in and fuck. So, like, Edward kind of is playing it cool, he's like, oh, you want to go swimming? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, but I need some time alone. And so Edward goes, okay. And so there's a getting ready to fuck montage. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. There's a monta there's like a two minute montage where she just gets ready to fuck this guy. And like she uh, she brushes her teeth. She what else uh she wha she shaves her legs. She takes a shower. And then she tries on lingerie. Like fucking two minutes of this. Where she's just trying on clothes and shit. It, like, I can't even remember the pop music. It was fucking awful. Maybe that was for the guys, so that they don't feel so bored. And like, oh, God, what a hey. No, like, you, don't even, no you don't even see anything good, really. The one time you see any kind of amount of skin on her is, like, later when she gets in a swimsuit and they go swimming together. Even in the lingerie? You see her in lingerie, like, one time for, like, five seconds. Mm. But that's it. And so, the big... The, the crux of this whole movie... Or at least the the start of it is that vampires are way stronger than humans, and he will break her. And he will and break her. One of the reasons why I actually wanted this this book to be adapted because it was the most messed up of the books. It is. It is. And so <laughs> so like Edward's all. Uh, by the way, Edward, this whole movie has one emotion, and you can't see it. But this, I'm, let me try to replicate the emotion, the one emotion that he that he portrays in this movie, where I I said it initially he looked like he's constipated. Let me let me let me try to go for the camera where he's he's got this one face where he's just like <laughs> And he's like he's like Bella Bella we can't do this and Bella's like But but I want to Edward and he's like but I'll hurt you And she goes You won't hurt me I know you and Edward's all <laughs> And Edward's like, okay, let's do this. So like, let's do this. Let's <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking romantic. <laughs> let's do this. Okay, he does Be right back. I gotta, I gotta wash uh, my paintbrush. Here. He doesn't say let's do this. That'd be my move. <laughs> I'd be like Geronimo. <laughs> hey God, I got whiskey here. I got whiskey. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Let me get my nose clamps. <laughs> oh! <Sorry>. Dive! <laughs> That's actually not bad either. <laughs> I gotta wash it down though, because it stings. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, like, he's, he's like, she's like, I, I want to do this, and I was like, but I'll hurt you. I'm so much more powerful than you. It's like they made a movie, you know, like that. Like, like, all comic geeks everywhere. It's like, how could Superman fuck Lois Lane? Because, like, when he comes, he'd blow, like, a shotgun through her back, right? Yeah. That's this movie! This movie is, like, what would happen if Superman fucked Lois Lane? Because, like, Edward fucks her so hard, it literally destroys the bed. It, well, and, and he supposedly, like, breaks her. Yeah, I think in the book he hurts her way worse than he does in the movie. Because yeah, in the... In, he, he, Fucks her up in the in the book. In the movie, he just bruises her. Like, he leaves hand marks and bruises on her. He's like, I'm so sorry, Bella. I'm, you must hate me right now. And she's like, no, let's fuck again. And so, like, she gets... <laughs> she does. No, she's like, she's like, you didn't hurt me. What are you talking about? And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm I'm too strong. I, 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 I just fuck you too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like... But I liked it. It was the best I've ever had. He's like, of course it's the best you've ever had. You're a virgin. And she's like, I know. <laughs> and so, 
<laughs> and so, but it's like she's got bruises on her. Technically true. And but she's like, she's like, I'm pretty sure that nobody's had it ever as good as you as I have just now. And he's like, thanks. <laughs> But I can't hurt you anymore. I, I, I can't hurt you, because when I fuck you, it hurts. So, like, so, like, um, oh, man. In history of the world, there have been five kisses considered to be greatest. <laughs> you guys got to start drinking if, you guys got to start drinking if I'm drinking, because I can't drink alone. Oh, I, I could get a sun kiss then. Do it. Do it. <laughs> we got a sun kiss then. <laughs> So, like, I forgot, uh, okay, so, like, he's so afraid that he's gonna hurt her, because apparently in the books, I think he, like, breaks her hip or something like that. Like, he hurts her really bad. He breaks her, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's actually one of the, you know, the key points is that, you know, he b breaks her and then heals her by turning into her, her into a vampire. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I'm getting that. So, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, watching this movie where he's all afraid of hurting her. I'm, like, dude, let her be on top. <laughs> Problem wait, solved. Wait a, damn second, wait a damn second. I just, I just thought of this. You know, this whole thing was about she wanted to become a vampire to be with him forever. And, you know, he's known, you know, superior strength and whatnot. Why the hell didn't he turn her, like, the they, to her? They just, they, they say that. They, like, they're, like... Jacob comes to her at the wedding and is like, uh, is like, why don't you just turn her now? Like, because you'll fucking kill her. You're, you're a vampire and you fuck her and you'll kill her. And she's like, I don't want to spend my honeymoon in agonizing pain after Edward turns me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, it was her choice. That's the justification. Like, what the fuck is keeping you? Just do it. Like, it's not like you're... The honeymoon ends when you say it ends. Yeah. Like, okay, so you spend a couple of days in rampant bloodlust and you're a vampire, but okay, fuck it, like... That's right, you're in Rio. <laughs> you're in Rio, <laughs> spend a month there. Who give You own an island. You own a... <laughs> you own a fucking island. There's no time limit here. And never once, by the way... Is mentioned the possibility of Bella or Edward going to college. Because far be it from Bella to be a strong uh, progressive feminist. You know, to want to further her career or an education. No, she just wants to fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. <laughs> well, that's been her entire life goal for, for like this entire series. Does she even ever actually do any homework or attend classes at school? Not that we, everything that's happened. Not that we've ever seen. Not, not that we've ever seen. So, but okay, so I'm like, I'm watching this movie, and I go like, he's all like, I'll hurt you. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't fuck you anymore because I'll hurt you. <laughs> and, and, like, just let her be on top. This isn't fucking rocket science. Let her give you a blowjob. <laughs> That's it! And, like, <laughs> oh, God, okay, come on, look, but, like, have her tap you on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Scarlet used to do that. It was like, to... <laughs> or, like, and dude, kicks in. <laughs> dude, haven't you ever heard the song Fuck Her Gently? <laughs> Sometimes you gotta fuck her shit. Well, given given the the writer and everything behind this, are we sure they even are aware of any other positions besides missionary? I, well, I that's just true. That's absolutely true. <laughs> come on, you can experiment. Same thing. Same problem I had with X Men. By the way, it was like Rogue. Rogue is like, I'll never touch a human being. I'll never have sex, dude. I've seen people who have some crazy fucked up latex sex, okay? <laughs> you could work well, this out. This is not impossible. Then... Yeah. Magneto, but that's another story. <laughs> then we have more montages, because this is necessary. After they fuck, we have a montage of them fucking more. Okay? Really? Then, yeah. I was going to say, actually, I heard that there was, like, that they, like, showed nothing. Like, everything happened off screen. It, no, no, no. It, it happens on screen, but you don't see, like, titties or anything like that. You don't see any, like, you don't see any nudity. Not really. But, um, um, you see a montage while they're fucking, 
And, like, the, the one thing they do on this honeymoon for recreation, other than fucking, is play chess. Play chess? They play, play chess? They play chess. Because, you know, when... <laughs> You know, when when you're done with the uh, with the epic orgasm. Yeah, yeah when, when you're done with the best orgasm you ever had in your life, your first I'm thought. Move some pawns around. Let's you set know, up the chessboard. I, I can think of a lot of games to play with someone you love, and something. Uh, and if I was to pick a game that lacked passion, in <laughs> right, romance, right, I think I, I don't no, think no, I'd do no. any worse than chess. No, no, they they have chess as foreplay because. Bella beats him at chess, and then they fuck. <laughs> I need to drink this whiskey here. Loser oh. gets bottoms. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I'm like, this motherfucker owns an island, and he doesn't own an Xbox? Dude. Jeez. Fingering the, the king and making it all erotic. Boot up Madden, for Christ's sake. Oh, Chess? That's the most boring shit I've heard in my life. You took more than that, Chess. big boy. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't even read oh, what I wrote here because I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, like, like, the whole time, this whole montage, Bella is fucking horny as shit. And, like, she's not only wants to have sex with him, she begs him to have sex with her. Begs. So kind of a reverse Anakin Skywalker here. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, okay. So, all that aside, after, like, two weeks, Bella starts to feel morning sickness. So, okay, and she realizes she's pregnant with a half-vampire abomination. So, like... I wonder what caused that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so she she's pregnant, and Edward fucking freaks out. And then, guess what? Can you guess what happens? Montage. We have... More fucking. No, 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 montage. We have a packing montage. Packing. A montage set to pop music where they pack their bags and go back to Washington because the, the other vampire in the family, Carlisle... He's the he's like a doctor and he would know this shit. So they have a montage and they pack. Hang on, I'm looking through my notes here. I gotta... you, know, you know, kind of think of it while you're looking through the notes there. Uh, I'm assuming that 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 uh, human vampire offspring is like a very rare phenomenon. Or well, yeah, 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 yeah. Because because well, they, they probably think about this kind of thing and wear protection. And even then, considering you know vampire human relations. And the fact that I, I don't know how the, bi the biology of vampires works. In the well, nobody world. does. Nobody <laughs> does because but the vampires in fucking Twilight were pulled right out of for Stephanie for Meyer's axe. Like nobody knows the biology. They fucking sparkle. <laughs> what what fucking vampires sparkle and like? What? I know it just seems like you'd want to you want to wear protection for these kind of things. Yeah, like. Just for, just for the possibility of vampire STDs. But, but, like, she's surprised. <laughs> but, like, she's surprised. Like, I fucked a dead person, and now something bad happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is terrible. So, like, okay. So they go back to Washington on their private jet. Because they, they have one. They have one. They're so rich they can afford a private fucking jet and an island off the coast of Brazil. Which I can understand for Edward, considering how long has he been alive? Like, a hundred some years? Like a hundred years. Like, something like that. So, like, they go back there, and there's the other vampires out there. And I actually like the other vampires, because they're, they're, they're kind of fun. There's, like, the really hot vampire. I think her name's Alice. Whose hair is... The supporting cast is, is better than the leads. Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah, the supporting cast is way better than, than the leads. That Rathbone guy who plays Harpo... Um, the Alice chick? Okay, so Alice, like, uh, uh, Bella is in really bad shape at this point. She's she's pregnant as hell. Like, even after two weeks, she's got a huge baby bump. And, like, they're really worried because this is basically like a direct ripoff of Dune. You remember what happens in Dune when, like, uh, when uh, Paul's mother drinks the water of life and she's pregnant and the fetus accelerate, uh, matures at an accelerated rate? That's what yeah, happens. He is the Quebec, Yeah, no, no, no. She she turns into Alia. 
like, yeah, so that, that, that's the baby, because it matures at this accelerated rate. But Alice says, I wrote this down because it was so stupid. Alice says, I can't see Bella's future anymore or the fetus. So, like, and that's her vampire power. Like, Alice, her power is that she can read the future with perfect accuracy. Okay? Do you remember that at all? Yeah. Okay. So that's her power. But apparently, her power only works when it's convenient for the plot. <laughs> because now, oh, now we can't see what happens. We, we, there's no way we know. Oh, hang on a second. You know, oh. another, another thought occurs to me uh, about this vampire human uh, offspring. I knew already that uh, that it was supposed to you know age rapidly. I, I read about that for the book. But you know what? How the hell does that make any damn sense? Considering vampires, you know, suspend. So their life. They actually, like, stop. W wouldn't it take, I, like, two years for the baby to be born? I don't know, like, it, they, they never That's explain the... F really? Okay, I hate, to, I hate to use this as a positive example, but, like, Anne Rice's interview with the vampire is pretty much the definitive word on vampire lore. Whether you like it or not. You know, like, the whole physiology of the vampires, they don't... Their heart doesn't beat, they don't breathe, they don't... They, they, they breathe, yeah. they don't eat, they don't have babies. But this movie, Stephanie Meyer just like, oh, they fuck, they they have babies, and like, you're just supposed to accept it. And I don't see why you're supposed to do that. So, this is where I really started to hate Bella. Again. Because... <laughs> you ever liked her? No, no, because no, she's so... She is such... She is so stubborn in this movie, because, okay, like, even at two weeks... She can feel the baby painfully kicking inside her body, right? Yeah. Like, it's causing her physical pain. And it's grown, like, even in the course of, like, a month, it's grown to the point where she's basically, like, eight months pregnant. She's huge. And it's, it's causing her, like, physical wounds. It's broken ribs. It kicks so hard it breaks her ribs. And they're like, every vampire, like, even Carla is like, you know, this is really not safe. We need to terminate this fetus because you'll die. Right? It's literally kicking your ribcage into splinters. And she's like, no, 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 you can't. I love it. I know it'll be okay. It's good. And they're like, they're like, we have never seen anything like this in the history of vampirism. This is fucking scary to us. This is growing at a rate we've never understood before. We have no conception of what this is doing to you. And we have no idea what's going to, what's going to emerge from your vagina when it's done. For all we know, it's some kind of half-demon abomination that'll become like a daywalker and conquer the world. Like, haven't you ever seen fucking seen Rosemary's Baby, for Christ's sake? <laughs> uh, here's a thought. I mean... I'm assuming Twilight takes place in modern day. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen the movies enough, but I was under the impression that they were in modern day. Have a frickin' C-section! Well, no, no, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. <laughs> because that's the good part of the movie. <laughs> I can't have any more rum. I'm really fucking drunk right now. Um, so, like, she's so stubborn. Even though this thing is killing her, she's like... I gotta have this baby. I got to. And so, like, Edward even, like, like, everyone is coming to her and going, this is fucking stupid. Like, why would you endanger your life for, like, and I'm not gonna get into the whole... Because of maternal instincts? I, I, I know, and I'm not even gonna get into the whole maternal instinct or anti-abortion thing, but let's just say, if this thing is in, like, not even possible danger of killing you, if it's in highly probable danger of killing you, like, 95% likely of killing you, let's have an abortion, okay? Like, we can do this under more controlled circumstances. I don't know. I know I'm, I know I'm going into a really dark area here, but, like, all I'm saying is, she makes this decision unilaterally to have this baby, which might kill her, disregarding completely every bit of input from her family, her friends, and her husband to have this baby, despite the known and entirely probable risks 
that this baby is going to burst out of her fucking stomach like the alien and kill her. Well, to be fair, she has fulfilled her life goal, so she had nothing else to live for. That's true, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, let me look at my notes here. I'm so fucking... She can up. die a happy woman. She had sex with Edward. She has no other reason to live. I can't even read this. It says, wet work is still awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> you wrote it. What do you know? What <laughs> it says? But yeah, uh, Murwalk uh, is uh, still us. Oh, I know. It says music is still awful. Ah. It says oh. I say Murfolk is still offer. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk when you when you write. Like perfect. <laughs> well, I'm writing in the dark. I can't read. <laughs> There so, are merfolk? We have mermaids and mermen now? I don't remember. Well, I wouldn't surprise me. No, okay, but like, okay, but we mustn't forget about Jacob, who's in this movie as well. Okay? Oh. Oh. The, the werewolf guy. So, like, they make, like, the stupidest decision I've ever thought of in a movie for this movie. Where, like, okay, Jacob is all tortured about, like, Bella giving birth to this half demon abomination that she's about to. It's going to kill her. Like, there's this whole truce between the vampires and the werewolves that's in jeopardy because of this. And so, like, the werewolves get together in the forest, and they start to have a debate about what to do with, with Bella, because they, like, the vampires have pretty clearly broken the treaty and are killing Bella. And so they have this scene where the werewolves... And by the way, the werewolves in this movie are still horrible. Like, you remember the CG in the first Twilight movie, how the werewolves were really fake-looking? Yeah. And really stupid? They're, like, they're as bad or worse in this movie. CG quality went down? They're so bad! Like, I can't believe they looked at the footage when they put together this movie and were like, Oh, that, that'll that pass muster. People will totally buy these or werewolves. Fuck. <laughs> they're so bad! The werewolves are so phony looking and terrible. Like, even the fans there, like, the theater was full when I went down there. And people were laughing whenever somebody turned into a werewolf. <laughs> they were, no, it was fucking hilarious. And they were laughing really at this scene where the werewolves get together in the forest and they start to have a debate. Where they have these really phony looking CG werewolves, like, walking around and snarling. But, um, voiced over the werewolves with, like, this really kind of esoteric echo effect, the werewolves are saying in, like, things like, uh, I am the grandson of the chief. We must destroy them. And it's it's so fucking stupid. You know, maybe, maybe I need to see Eclipse to understand this, but why the hell is there a truce between the vampires and the werewolves based entirely around this stupid, vacant-eyed psychopath? Uh, it, no, it's not around Edward. It's around, like, the whole... No, no, no I mean Bella. But, 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 you're right, though. You're right, though. The truce makes no sense. Okay, let's look at it this way. The vampires who own an island off the coast of Brazil decide they want to, like, like, okay, they want to they wanna subject themselves to human uh, exposure. They don't want to isolate themselves. They don't want to be a part of society. Okay, fine. They go to Washington. They run afoul of the werewolves to the point where there's a war. And then they form a truce with the werewolves to where they can live peacefully with the werewolves as long as they don't kill anybody. Okay? Fair enough. Here's plan B. Here's something easier. Move somewhere else. Do you really have to live near Forks, Washington? Really? <laughs> you own an island! Fucking sell the island and move to New York! Move anywhere. You don't need to truce with the fucking werewolves. Go somewhere. <laughs> They're so worried about. Oh, we can't. We can't turn Bell into a vampire because that'll break the treaty. There. What again? What the hell do the other werewolves and other vampires give a rat's ass about Bella? I can understand that this was just between Edward and Jacob, but what the hell does everyone, all the other werewolves and vampires care about this stupid idiot? I don't know. Everyone because thinks they care about Bella, and, and you know, and the, the werewolves are the whole, the whole thing was that, you know, the werewolves, you, 
Jacob loves Bella. Right, and, and Jacob, <laughs> Jacob, like the king of the werewolves? Like, no, 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 he's not, no. But, <laughs> I don't get this. But Jacob loves Bella so much that he actually turns against his own kind. He turns against the werewolves and tells the vampires that the werewolves are coming to kill him. So guess what happens? Montage! <laughs> Hacking? No, no, no. There's a montage of the vampires and, and Jacob walking the perimeter at night as, as Bella is laid up in a bed having this baby, right? So there's this really long, shitty montage of that. Um, and there's this really funny scene where Edward starts Googling. He starts Googling the, the concept of half-vampire children. And he starts getting these pictures of, like, fucking alien chest bursters that are devouring entire villages. I would have thought it would have brought up a picture of, like, Connor from, a from Buffy and Angel. <laughs> that would have been it's funny if they brought up Buffy and Angel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Okay, so the, fe the, the growth of the fetus is not going well, okay? It's like, it's, it's, it's physically hurting her, and it's more than likely it's going to kill her. And so, it, like, she's completely pregnant. She's, like, nine months pregnant. She's about, to, she's about to blow at any minute. But she's dying. And Carlisle, the, 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 the blonde vampire, is like, Bella, if we don't terminate this pregnancy right away, I'm afraid it's going to kill you. Your heart can't take it. And so Bella's like, but I have to. I love this baby. I'm going to deliver it. And Carlo's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. You'll die. And so Jacob's like, well, it's a half vampire, so probably it wants blood, right? And I'm like, okay. They're like, yeah, that makes sense, right? Because it's a half vampire. So they're like, well, maybe Bella needs to drink blood. Because that's science. <laughs> well... That's it kind of is. That is, that is fucking Doctor Insano level science, right? Isn't she a vampire already? I tried to put the cap on this shot glass. <laughs> but by this time, isn't she already? I mean, I thought that she was she already a vampire, a vampire by now. No, 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 no. She's not a vampire yet. And that's why I'm kind of, it kind of makes sense to have her drink blood, but at the same time, I was under the impression that, I, I'm not a medical expert, I don't know how babies <laughs> work, but I was under the impression that uh, the, uh, the way the nutrients transfer from the mother to the fetus is that it, it's basically like, just like a general stream of nutrients. Not like oh, Lewis, you ignorant slut. <laughs> <laughs> You're bringing science into this? <laughs> yes, damn it! Because <laughs> they sure as hell didn't. So they're like, okay, so they're like, okay, the fetus needs blood. So they go, okay, where do we get blood? And Carlisle's like, oh, well, I was expecting Edward to turn you into a vampire by now, so I've got some O-negative blood in the fridge. So they go, great! So Carlisle brings the bags of blood out, and he's, I'm not even shitting you. I'm not even shitting you. He squeezes the bags of blood into a styrofoam cup <laughs> with a straw and has her drink it. <laughs> he squeezes bags of blood into a styrofoam cup with a straw. <laughs> Is it like a little twirly straw? No, 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 no. It's like, it's like if you've ever gone to like, uh... Not like a Jack in the Box, because those have actually like, des <laughs> those actually have like cups with designs. Have you ever went to like kind of one of those uh, family Mexican restaurants, like Filiberto's or something like that, that have the plain white styrofoam cups? That's what he squeezes the bags of blood into. It's like the styrofoam cups with a straw. He's like, drink this and you'll feel better. And she drinks it, and sure enough, it fucking works. She feels better. And then. The funniest... That wasn't the funniest part of the movie. Oh, no, okay. And then she starts feeling better, so she calls her dad. Because she's been missing for, like, a month now, right? Oh, jeez. And so she finally calls her dad after, like, a month, claiming she's got some kind of tropical illness that she got from fucking Brazil. And then she proceeds to lie her skinny ass off 
about how she's feeling much better and she'll be home any minute. Oh, but, oh by the way, I'm checking into a Swiss medical facility first. <laughs> and of course, Mustache Dad is like, but Bill, I'm wor Okay, fine. <laughs> He's, He's given up. He's completely given up. This is usual for Miss Swan. He's completely given up at this point because fuck, it's been three movies. If he if she hasn't listened to him now, she's never gonna fucking listen to him ever. Or like fucking call the full force of the authority down upon Edward, who has repeatedly brought her back to his house with broken legs and human bite marks on her arm. This has happened in previous movies, by the way. Yes. By the way, does, does the father know about vampires? No, no, no. Of course not. <laughs> even she though... The only one. Even though... Gotta be freaking kidding me. No, no yeah, exactly. Because even though the, the mustache dad was at the, at the wedding reception, and Carlisle brought his entire, entire fucking extended family to the wedding, and by the way, who all obviously look like vampires, because... The vampires in this movie have these really obvious, like, amber contact lenses in. They look fucking surreal. Like, see, nobody... See, now, now I have this image in my head of Edward, like, gathering all of his extended family in, like, one room and saying, Okay, guys, now Bella's family doesn't know vampires, <laughs> so don't mention that at any point. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the, the, fucking, the fucking extended vampire family shows up at the, at the, at the reception... And they all obviously look like vampires. They're pale as fucking sheets. They have these, like, unearthly yellow eyes. But, oh. Oh, of course, like, he never puts this together. Like, of course, I mean, obviously a cop wouldn't think that these guys are obviously vampires. But he would obviously think that something was up. Because, right, like, she disappeared for weeks at a time. She, she flew to Arizona and returned with a broken fucking leg. She flew to Italy and didn't tell him, and she returned with no explanation for what she'd just done. And now, she's marrying this creepy fucking vampire dude at the, at the age of 18, which honestly is not normal at this day and age. Let's face it. Um, usually, usually people like to play the field, you know, or... It's just it's just a different age nowadays. Nobody gets married at eighteen. I think there's actually a character Anna Kendrick's character actually mentions that. Who gets married at eighteen, right? Okay. So um Okay, so then they start coming they they're coming up on the birth, okay? The, like the baby is really close. And then Bella starts talking baby names. Okay. So she Damien? brings No, Damien. yeah, you'd think Damien, right? So like she brings Edward and Jacob into the room. She's like, I've been thinking about baby names. What do you think? If it's a boy, we'll name it EJ, which is Edward and Jacob. And they're like... Oh, you've got to be freaking no, no, no. kidding. That's not bad. That's, no, seriously, not when you hear what the alternative is. That's not bad. Okay, I've heard that. Although I wouldn't... Why, why wouldn't Edward have a problem with that? Naming his child after fucking Jacob, who is the other guy who was really desperately trying to pork Bella... More than anything. Okay. So, like, she goes, but if it's a girl, I'm thinking of naming it Renesme. Renesme. Yeah. Renesme. Let that soak in for just a second. Okay. Here's the logic behind it. She says, okay, I'm thinking of naming it after my mother, whose name is Renee. And the island in which she was conceived, which is Esme. Renesme. <laughs> Why? I hate it. Give her rats behind about where she was conceived. I don't know. Hang on, I'm gonna take a drink again. Hey, <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Oh, after mother, that's sweet. Reness, they at the freaking island. That doesn't make. If if I had. A kid, I would not, and, and it was conceived in in my hometown. I would not name my child Shoreview. <laughs> well, no, it'd have to be it'd have to be like Liz Shoreview. <laughs> <laughs> Liz Shoreview. <laughs> no, no, no Shoreview. Name my mother, of course. So. Oh, your so, mother. Okay. Uh, uh, my mother's name is Avanel, so Ava Shore. Wait, 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 wait. Ava Shore. Wait, wait, back up. Back to crazy. Your mother's name is Avanel. Yeah. What? 
my mother's side of my family, they love to have un uh, a little bit more unique and unusual name. So You um, don't say! Is my grandmother's name is Alice. <laughs> Your grandmother's name is Renesmee? <laughs> <laughs> Abanel? Holy shit! Now we understand it all! I get it! Abanel is a real damn name. <laughs> yeah, I'm it. sure it is. I'm sure it's a real name. Okay. Okay. I'll kick your ass, man. Uh, I'm not saying. Your mother's a saint, I'm sure. Damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Mother Linkar is very nice. <laughs> okay. Right. So then we get to the. No, no, I'm still, I'm still hung up on this. Renesme. <laughs> Renesme. <laughs> do, do it in your head, Bella. She Come put. On. She put this together in her fucking head. Made oh, total geez. sense. He's that poor kid. And what's funny is. I, okay, of course I haven't read the books. Okay, of course. But they actually play this scene for laughs in the movie because it's obviously so ridiculous that even the characters have to kind of like take a step back and go, really? Because <laughs> even, even, even Jacob is like, what? I'm so not even sure that happens in the books. Because I, I'm pretty sure what happens in the books is they agree to it immediately. They're like, oh, that's brilliant, Bella. You're so smart. Renesmee, that makes total sense to me. <laughs> and, okay, so then, she's, then things start getting bad. She starts going into labor. The baby kicks so hard, it breaks her spine. Yes. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, yeah. So, then she goes into labor, but the problem is, Carlisle, the doctor, is out getting more blood, so he can't help. So the other untrained vampires are helping to deliver this baby, and so, of course she's in deep shit at this point. So, like, one of the vampires, uh, Beth, I think her name is, starts, like, digging, it's, it's, it's like, she can't deliver this baby normally, she has to have a C-section. So she whips out a fucking scalpel and just like jams it into her fucking stomach and like rips her open. And she's like, oh my god! And I'm she, pretty sure that's not how it works. I'm pretty sure that's not how C-sections work. But of course that doesn't work. She starts to die. Okay, so Edward... No! So Edward, I'm not even kidding, goes, goes, I gotta get that thing out of there. And then he opens his mouth and then... You see him, like, dive under the camera, onto her stomach, and, like, start chewing. Duh. He's like, he's like, I gotta get this thing out of there. <gasps> ah! And then, like, you hear this munching sound, like, you hear this chewing sound, and she screams in pain. And then, before you know it, this baby is in his hands, like, covered in, like, chunky salsa. <laughs> like, covered in gore. And he's like... Guess what, Bella? Her name's Renesme. <laughs> there's like, there's no umbilical you can't see cord. It's but I'm holding my my, my my pop can up to my forehead, kind of lulling back and forth. <laughs> okay. I don't so, think she. He just bit open her stomach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think to to, yeah. to be accept be happy about the Renesme. So I think what happens in the book. Again, which I haven't read. I think what happens in the book, what I've been told, is that he actually gives her a C-section with his vampire teeth. Yeah, I, I read about that. I, you was, did. Again, it's one of those messed up things about it that I maybe wanted okay. to do. Okay, and that was like one of those things that, I've been, uh, that I was told, and I was like, I can't wait to see this filmed. Because I can't believe how they're actually going to film this. Okay. So I was like, my initial thought, like if you told me, if you told me, this is how we're gonna film this movie. We're gonna you're gonna shoot a scene where there's a ba there's a woman giving birth to a vampire fetus, and then a guy cuts her out of his womb with his vampire teeth. What I would have done is ba remember like in like the old like 1930s vampire movies like Nosferatu, where yes. like they would they would just kind of cut to a shot of a window as a thunderstorm is raging outside and like. Lightning is crashing and there's a sound of screaming. That's what I would have done. Is just like cut to a scene of someone screaming and have it implied that that shit was happening. Because there's no way you could actually film this. There's no way you could actually film Edward like 
baring his teeth and like, ha, 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 ha. Like, suggesting that the uh, birthing scene should have been done by David Cronenberg. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I said. It was like, that scene is so fucked up, it's Cronenbergian. Like, and honestly, Cronenberg would have done a really good job with that scene. But what they do in this scene is they basically shoot the whole scene from the point of view of Bella. Okay? So, like, she's looking at Edward... And he, like, just dives down under the camera, like, like just dives down, and you don't see anything. He just, like, you, you hear this munching sound, like, <laughs> and then and then he just, like, like pulls this baby out. He's like, guess what? It's a girl! And I'm like, this is hard science right here, this shit. This is... <laughs> okay, so, like, they pull the baby out, and then she starts to die. Because, obviously, the trauma that's been inflicted on this poor woman is catastrophic to the point of hilarity, right? So, she dies. And he's like, I was like, I gotta do something. Everyone's like, I gotta do something. So, he goes and gets this huge fucking hypodermic needle, like, like two foot long, and jams it into her heart. He's like, it's my venom. It's my vampire venom. And, like, injects her full of this shit. And it doesn't work. And he starts giving her, like, he starts giving her movie CPR. You know, like, how real CPR looks? Yeah, yeah. Like, what real CPR looks like real CPR. Movie CPR looks like somebody is kind of, like, heaving against somebody's chest, going, like, live, damn it, live! <laughs> and, like, starts, like, pounding her fist against her chest. You're like, live, Bella, you're stronger than this! And he collapses her rib cage completely. Yeah, yeah, and he does. Like, that's actually something that happens later when she gets better. It's like her rib cage, like, reinflates. <laughs> but like so he he starts giving her like movie CPR and it doesn't work and he goes she must need more venom and so he like he stops giving her CPR and bites her and bites her in the neck and then he's like I need to bite her more and so he takes her arm and he bites her arm and then he takes her thigh and he bites her thigh and he takes her boob and he bites her boob and I'm like and I'm like Dude, this is so not helping. <laughs> Why didn't you get a fucking defibrillator? Get a fucking defibrillator, you cunt. <laughs> and I'm like, a hundred years, a hundred years you've walked on this earth, and all you've ever done is go to high school. You couldn't have gone to med school. You couldn't have learned how to be a. You couldn't have learned how to be a doctor on your own. Edward Cullen, MD. Well, not like he. Okay, if you're 120 years old, you'd think you'd actually try to further your education a little bit. You wouldn't waste it on high school. I'm just thinking in my head, like, Edward, like, jumping around. I'm just imagining the scene, like, in, like, in freaking ER or something with Edward Cullen, just jumping around with, like, the high-tension action music playing. She needs more venom! <laughs> no, no, she, that's what he's like. like, she needs more venom. Ha! And then, like, hang on, I gotta bite her somewhere else. Ha! And then he bites her somewhere else. Ha! And then, sure enough, she gets better. She lives. But, okay, but before that, before that, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead. Everyone thinks she's... You skipped ahead? I did, I did. Everyone, if this takes from... No, seriously, this scene takes like 15 minutes where she's dead and Edward is giving her CPR. Everyone thinks she's dead. So Jacob is horror-stricken by this revelation. Jacob is just like completely destroyed by this because Belle is dead. The love of his life is dead. So he blames the baby, this half-vampire abomination that's been born onto the earth. He's like, I'm going to kill this fucking thing. I'm going to kill it. So he goes in the house. He goes in the house to kill the baby. And he looks at the baby, and all of a sudden... You ever see that scene in Wayne's World where, like, uh, Garth looks at uh, what's-her-name and gets that Dreamweaver sequence? Uh, yeah. Dream Woman. Yeah, yeah, the dream woman. Dream weaver! That's what happens to Jacob. Jacob looks at this baby, and fucking dream weaver starts playing. <laughs> and, and then he he's like... imprints on it. Yeah, he imprints on the baby. And if you don't know, I actually, I actually do kind of applaud this movie for establishing the concept of imprinting before they actually, like, pulled it out in this movie. Because they actually do that, where the... The werewolves are on a beach talking about imprinting. So they actually did foreshadow this, so it's not completely out of left field. 
But like, because yeah, I read about this, this is another thing Ing, that uh, makes this thing so freaking messed up. It's so messed up because what 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 happens is werewolves can sometimes imprint on another person, and that means they are genetically bound to this other person and like genetically predisposed to being in like absolute love with them. That's what happens to Jacob Black and Renesme. <laughs> who by the way, I remind you, is a, is an infant less than a day old. He imprints on a baby and starts like he starts fantasizing. Like you see this. You see a montage. Of course you see a montage. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> you see a montage of Jacob imagining his future with this baby who's grown up and then having a life together. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. So I repeat. No, no, no. So I repeat. So wow. So to explain this to you for the people in the peanut gallery, Jacob starts having sexual fantasies about a baby. <laughs> Newborn porn. Newborn porn. <laughs> Man, this this is fucked up right here. It's so <laughs> fucked up. So, he immediately forgets about Bella. Like, okay, he does. No, he does. He falls to his knees. There's this scene where he's like, Oh, my God! And he falls to his knees, and he like he's like, I love this baby so much, I'm going to fuck it one day. <laughs> <laughs> Call child protective services. <laughs> we need an adult in this room. <laughs> Oh my god. And then, like, for some reason, okay, so the werewolves. Okay, so. Once his face walks in, hello, Jacob, have a seat. Yeah, why don't you take a seat over there? <laughs> okay, so this whole time, by the way, the, the werewolves are planning to kill the vampires because the vampires just, as, soon, uh, as far as they know, just killed Bella. So as far as they're concerned, they broke the treaty. The, the, the treaty. The, <laughs> the treaty. The no, treaty. there's something as stupid as this. It's a treaty. <laughs> it's a treaty. So as far as the werewolves are concerned, they broke the treaty. So or the treaty in the facts of life. <laughs> the tr and, yeah. and the treaty. So the werewolves are coming to go kill the vampires. So um, the werewolves attack the vampires at their house. And then Jacob comes out who is hell-bent on protecting Renesme because he's imprinted on her. He's completely in love with this baby. And then Jacob starts, as this really majestic music starts playing, Jacob says, it's over. And they go, why? And he goes, because um, Jacob is imprinted on Renesme, and once a werewolf is imprinted on a baby, that baby cannot come to harm. It is werewolf law. <laughs> I am so not even kidding. It's fucking... It is it law. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's the highest law werewolves know. And the werewolves... The werewolves <laughs> fucking the leave. The werewolves fucking leave. Okay. <laughs> Probably thinking, oh, this is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, fuck, this is too fucked up, I can't. First Amendment. He's imprinted on a baby? Oh, Jesus. Is this like a werewolf constitution? <laughs> okay, so then... It's the werewolves do declare under the full moon. <laughs> We're playing by a whole different set of uh, ethics here. I don't know who likes this shit. <laughs> I don't I know. Have friends, I, I've had friends who I've worked with who liked it, and I still don't know why that. Jade up. I'm not it saying anything bad about your wife. Your wife is lovely. I've met her, but I don't know how anyone can read this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I really don't. And like, if it's just a matter of porn, like you can find porn. <laughs> Why Twilight? Why Twilight's not even good when it comes to porn. Like, like, okay, at its basis level, Twilight is like a Harlequin romance. It's every bit as stupid, really. Like a bodice ripper Harlequin romance. Some princess meets a pirate. 
and they fuck, and they fuck a lot, and they're of different social classes, but it doesn't matter because they're in love. And by the way, oh, one, one of the trailers I saw for, for fucking Breaking Dawn, they're re-releasing Titanic in 3D. Oh, God. Yeah. And I'm, honestly, I'm not, too, I'm not too opposed to that. Because here's the thing. I would rather have them re-release a movie than remake it. Yes. Like, okay. I that. Like, and I, I know I keep bringing this up. Somebody told me this isn't happening anymore, but like uh, Escape from New York. I know that's not happening anymore, but movies like that, like, uh, like uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, like, why would they bother remaking that? Why would they bother remake, remaking any movie when they could literally just re-release the movie for free? You know? And Let's, make more money. Yeah, and make more maybe like, money. Maybe like give it a, a just a, kind of, not necessarily give it the full George Lucas treatment, mm -hmm. but like, uh, what's, the, what's the phrase they use to, to, for referring to cleaning up the movie, making it look better? Remastering? Remastering, that's I can't it. believe I pulled that. I'm so drunk right now. But yeah, like, like let's just say Escape from New York is still getting remade, because the only example I can think of. But let's just say, let's say Re Escape from New York is still getting remade. They don't need to remake it. All they need to do is re-release it. T literally take the entire old movie and say, guess what? We're putting it in theaters again. Go watch it. Or like even Star Wars. You know, that's another, that's another trailer I saw. I saw uh, uh, The Phantom Menace in the 3D. The crap for, for Phantom Menace, yeah. Okay, let's just put aside the fact that I think Phantom Menace fucking sucks. But that's all you kind of need to do is... You can just re-release a Star Wars movie. You don't need to fucking tinker with it. Like, let's just say, let's just say George Lucas is like, hmm, I need to make 20 more million dollars. All he needs to do is say, guess what? Episode 4 A New Hope is going up uncut, untouched in theaters right now. Everyone in the United States would go to see that. I would. I, saw I would. The... I saw the, the, the special edition. So of did that, I. And even I, though the special edition is stupid with the CGI, I, I still enjoyed it. I right. Saw it again. Right. I saw I saw every one of the special editions, not expecting the betrayal that the special editions would be with the with the fucking uh, CG and the the screaming as he falls down the 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 Bespin pit. Mm. But I saw him. All you need to do for any one of these given fucking movies is be like, guess what? We're just you know what? We're just putting Titanic back in the fucking theater. Go watch it. People would go watch it! So, like, honestly, I didn't have a problem with that. If you want to do it in 3D, okay, fine, whatever. I don't care. But that's my problem with George Lucas, if I'm going off on a tangent. is just, you know what? You don't even need to, you don't even need to spend $10 million shooting a new fucking dance sequence for Re Return of the Jedi. You don't need to fucking CG stuff. Just be like, you know what? We're putting Star Wars back in theaters. All three movies... Pay seven fifty to go see it. We'd go see it, and we'd feel proud to do it. So that's that's my take on the whole remake thing. Okay, so back to back to breaking far, a uh, breaking wind or breaking dawn. <laughs> breaking Bella, yeah. <laughs> breaking smile. Okay, Jeez. so at this point, Bella is dead, but he injects her with so much venom <laughs> that she's getting better. Hi, hi, puppy. You become an uber vamp. So she starts to heal. The vampire venom starts to heal her. So guess what happens? Montage. <laughs> there's a, there's a montage of her resurrection as a vampire. How yeah. is there a montage? It just happened. It, yeah, yeah. So like, what happens is she, they 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 kind of put her in a dress. And by the way, this is actually another thing that this movie did really well. Ironically enough, whoever did the makeup effects for Bella in this movie actually does deserve an award. Really? Yeah. Because what happens is, over the course of the movie, the baby starts, like, destroying her physically and starts, like, feeding on her and starts sapping her energy. And she starts to look really shockingly underweight. Like, she looks like she weighs 70 pounds by the end of this she movie. She already looks look fairly thin. Yeah, she already looks really thin in this movie, but by the end of this, she looks like a fucking skeleton in this movie. She looks fucking bad. And bad in the good way, where I mean, like, whoever did the makeup for this, or if she just lost the weight on her own, dude, she's a trooper, because that looked awesome. 
that was a really good moment in this movie where she looked like she really did look f physically devastated by this vampire thing she's growing. But yeah, that looked really good. So there's this montage of her becoming a vampire, and it's all the you remember in you ever watch CSI where like when they start talking about bullet entry wounds and stuff like that, and they mm -hmm. cut to like the bullet crashing into the body and like inside the body and like you see the bullets splintering bones. It's like yeah, that in that reverse. It, it's really gory, but in reverse, where, like, you're inside her body, and you see her nerves regenerating, and you see her spinal cord reforming, you see her ribs reforming, but it's like this montage where she gets better, and that's how the movie ends, is she opens her eyes, and she's got red eyes. She's a vampire now. That's how the movie ends. But that's not how really the movie ends, because, okay, the credit sequence, I have to, I have to establish the, right off the bat, the credit sequence looks like something off a 1990s independent movie, the, the credits are... I, I rarely would bash on the movie for having really shitty credits, but this movie really does have shitty credits. Because the move, the music is so bad, and it's so weirdly edited together. Why you would have credits like this? But okay, so at the midpoint of the credits, the best scene in the movie happens. Okay. Yeah, okay. So you're, you're so not even ready for this. Okay, so do you remember, do you remember the Vulturi... Do you know what the Vulturi are? Yeah, yeah, I remember those from that vlog. They're like the right. vampire Illuminati. Right. Thing. The the yeah. the people the people who live in Italy who are in charge of the vampires. Okay, and they're headed by Michael Sheen, who is also in Tron Legacy, who also camped it up like a fucking beast in that movie as well. But okay, so what happens is this really awful music is playing, and then they start rolling the scene of this woman walking into a throne room, and. The Vulturi are sitting in this throne room. In this throne room, there's three chairs. There's these three huge stone thrones. So apparently, all the, all the Vulturi do all day, all day, is like sit in their thrones in these really black robes looking fruity. That's all they do. They, if you were that powerful, what would you do with your time? Dude, I would go traveling. I would go like... I don't know. I wouldn't sit in a throne in a robe looking fruity. Yeah, I, see a, I see it kind of like the office space thing. They would do nothing. They would, they would just enjoy But no, no, that's what they're doing. They're literally doing nothing. It's like, it's like, all three of these motherfuckers are sitting in a room on stone, uncomfortable fucking chairs, staring straight ahead, doing nothing. That's all the Vulturi do all day, every day. I'm like... Dude, you gotta give these guys some kind of life. I would have believed it if this woman had walked into the Vulturi playing fucking Madden 2012. <laughs> <laughs> I would have bought that. If you, if you, if she'd have walked in on the Vulturi playing cards, like playing Magic the Gathering, I would have believed that. Or chess, even or chess. chess. <laughs> if the Vulturi were playing good. fucking chess, I'd have been like, you know what? They're passing the time. They're doing something because they're fucking immortal and they're bored. They're not just sitting in a fucking chair staring straight ahead. But okay. So this woman delivers this message from Carlisle, the, the, the guy who's like who created Edward. Yeah. And these guys are out of a completely different movie. It's like Michael Sheen is like out of Rocky Horror. He goes, okay, this woman delivers him a message, and, she, and, and Michael Sheen goes, Mmm, well, it looks like Carlisle has added, a, has added a new addition to his family. Mmm, oh. <laughs> and then there's this other vampire who's sitting in his eye, I think it's right, and this vampire goes, And what shall we do about it? And, and fucking uh, Michael Sheen goes, Well... It seems we have an appointment with vampires in Forks. Mmm, ow. Mmm, ow. I'm so gay. Mm. I was actually kind of wondering what they would do for the, for the, for the second part of the script, for the way you describe it. Most of the stuff I had heard about Breaking Dawn was that, like, uh, the baby grows up really fast, then yeah, she yeah. gets together with Jacob, and then happily ever after. Yeah, so that's what happens. All this okay. happened in the first The, the second movie, part, like, huh? what happens in the second movie is that the thing is, um, it's forbidden among the vampires to have child vampires. It's just not allowed for the Why? vampires that... 
Because it's not normal. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, because they're like the pinnacles of, of of normalcy. I forget what they're called. They call. I remember reading it somewhere on a wiki where they're like they're called unnatural children or unwanted children or something like that. Where like you know, if 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 that was like you know a big no no among vampires, how come no one's mentioned this before? I well yeah, you'd think at some point it, they would have foreshadowed this, but yeah, that's what. The, think of, come think of it, that just creates huge plot holes with this because you know if if a vampire birth was just unusual, then yeah, they don't know what they're doing. They're really freaked out and confused by it. But if there's like actual like lore about it, and I'm saying no, this this is forbidden. You'd think that would be a more well-known thing in the vampire community then. And they would well, be like, no, you can't do this because it's forbidden kind of crap like that. I, I, I don't know, but it's it, that's that's what happens in the second movie. So, like, Michael Sheen is, is he seriously, he is, he is the only guy, aside from Mustache Dad, who is in on the joke. You know what I mean? Who actually, like, maybe they're all in on the joke, but, like, Mustache Dad and Michael Sheen are the only guys in this entire series of movies, who do not give a fuck. <laughs> they are, they, they know they're in a Stephanie Meyer movie, and they are just going to ham it up to the hundredth degree in this movie. Because Michael Sheen is so fucking fruity in this movie. For the two minutes he's on screen, he's just like, mm, oh, Edward Cullen, he's married a wife. Oh, mm, yes. Ah, that makes me so horny. Oh, who's the who's the one girl who plays the uh, the well, one of the Venturi? Oh, uh, what's her name? The I can't remember. Dakota Fanning. Dakota Fanning. She's not. Is no, she she's there? no, she's not in this. Like I said, this is only like a two minute scene at the end of the credits. Oh. But Dakota Fanning's on this movie. But like this guy next to her is like so. How do we feel about this? Mm. These guys just spend all their day of their afterlife being supremely gay. <laughs> and I'm not saying like it's a bad thing. I'm saying like <laughs> these guys are so stereotypically gay, it's funny. It really so like and so the, the it, it's actually a really funny sequence and it's meant to be funny because like Car uh, the, the not Carlisle, the Michael Sheen character is clearly about to, to feed on the woman who brought him the message. And he's like, and by the way, it's Carlisle with an S. <laughs> he actually does like, he actually does prolong the S in Carlisle. And I'm like, this is fucking brilliant. <laughs> Carlisle with an S. What, what, so it's Carlisle? Yeah, yeah, Carlisle. But that, that's how you spell Carlisle, but he's like, and by the way, my dear, it's Carly with an S. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this movie was a piece of shit. This movie... Uh, it, it sounds like it, man. This movie sucked so bad. <laughs> Nothing happens in this movie. Fucking Nothing! Nothing happens! They get married, they fuck, she has a baby. It sounds like a lot happens, a lot of stupid things. That's it! I could have abstracted the whole getting married and fucking thing into five minutes. Five minutes, and that's even if I was being, like, self-indulgent. Like, if I was going to live... I'm going to stretch this out and make it painfully clear to anyone with half a, half a midbrain that these two are getting married and fucking. Five minutes I could have hammered this thing out. This thing takes 45 fucking minutes to even approach the pregnancy subplot. You could, you could do that in easily a third of the time. Maybe this is 15, like, 20 minutes she's starting to get pregnant. Not even. Not even. The fact that they broke this into two movies is like, you remember... You remember in, in, in junior high when your English teacher would give you a five-page essay? Okay? And then you had two pages, and then to fill it up to five pages, you increased the font to, like, 24 point. <laughs> Double spaced. Double spaced. That's what this movie is. It is so fucking padded 
and double spaced. That it's like this movie is so fucking. It did not need to be two hours. It didn't need that. I could have knocked out both halves of this fucking atrocious novel in ninety minutes. Hell, I could have knocked out. I fucking guarantee I could knock it out in seventy minutes. But you know, Harry Potter, the Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. I disagreed with them splitting it into two movies. I said they should have just released it in one really long movie, three and a half hours. They could have done that. But you know what? I don't really grudge the idea. It was a marketing decision. At this point in time, they kind of have to split it into two movies. And you know what? They did a pretty good job splitting it into two movies. Let's just fit. Because there was enough that yeah. goes on in The Deathly Hollows that they could have... There's so much behind the scenes, and there's so much that Harry has to do to get the Horcruxes and stuff like that. You can justify two movies. I could argue it, but you could justify it. There is no justifying Breaking Dawn being put into two fucking movies. Because there's... I mentioned no Harry Potter has more business being called a saga than Twilight. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Because this... Like, nothing fucking occurs in this movie that makes it worth your attention. It's just everyone looking... Everyone in this movie just spends the entire time looking tortured and fucking angry. Because it gotta be in two movies. <laughs> like, we're getting paid for both, right? And I've gotta sit around for the shit? Ah. I, I, I... Okay, it, that's the movie. That's how the movie ends. It's because of Vampire. I suppose I should wrap this up. I don't even know how long... I can't even read the number. I think I've been going on for an hour and a half... An hour and 21 minutes. That's okay. Do you have any questions for me? Like, while I'm completely hammered out of my mind? <laughs> no, I, I mean... They, uh, well, not for me. I, I think it's pretty obvious... Uh, about, yeah. about... Are you going to see the second one? Well, you're kind of obligated. Now well, I, I gotta know how it ends, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. You know what? Honestly, no. Um, most of the fun... This, I'm gonna get kind of morose on you for a second, but, like, most of the fun of going seeing these Twilight movies, and the reason I didn't want to go see this one, is because I was going with somebody, and I could make jokes about it, with Scarlet, and that was like that was the most fun I ever had was was making jokes about this movie with someone, and I, I I just don't have any friends, and like she's gone, and I don't. It's it's just me watching this really fucking boring movie, and there's no joy in it. It's I so get you. though. In fairness, you know you got us. We'll talk to you about it. I, <laughs> but you didn't even go see it. Uh, of course not. It's a piece of shit. Well, of course, yeah, exactly. You right. See it to know that. But I, I, just, I don't even know who goes to the theater. The theater was fucking packed. There was not an empty seat in the house. But the, what's the, 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 what, what I didn't understand was okay. I would have understood if at the end of the movie, I, I, what's, what's, what's weird is if at the end of the movie these guys had given it a standing ovation, I'd been like, you know what, these guys are idiots. I get that. But. At all the really funny moments of this movie, people were laughing. Like Renesme. It's fucking stupid. And people were laughing. I cannot imagine who reads these books, who watch these movies, who when the Renesme moment comes up, or when, when Edward gives a C section with his vampire teeth. <laughs> I just don't see how anyone can read this and take it seriously. And, uh, and, and, and honestly, I might be turning around this like, like J Dub. I'm sure your wife is great. I'm sure you know. You know what it is? Is maybe no, no, like, no. Maybe she read this and she fully appreciates it for the ironic, kind of funny romance that it is. It's cheesy. It's really stupid, sure. But you know what? For two hours, it's a really funny ride. I can understand that, but. It's, it really is a matter of sharing it with somebody that I was really missing this time. That's why I needed you guys for this thing, because it would have been... It would have been really sad for me to be, like, sitting here at this table just, like, bitching about it drunkenly on my own. I just needed somebody to kind of bounce this shit off of. 
So I thank you, thank you guys for for being here. So like, <laughs> not, a it is not a problem, man. It was a lot of fun. Well, and and you know, to from what I've heard, uh, because she actually has not read uh, Breaking Dawn, she doesn't care to. Really? Um, yeah, she she read the first three, and she was like, okay, the story is done. And she, she had the baby. told me that Breaking Dawn was written because people wanted an ending, and Stephanie Meyer supposedly was just like, oh, okay. And she pulled something out of her ass. And even the people who love the series just go, wow. No, this was the, 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 I understand what you're saying, but what was funny was I heard people out of the theater. People coming out of the theater were saying this movie sucked. I, I heard a group of like six women saying this movie was really bad, and yeah. they said how much more they liked the novel. They were like, "This is nowhere near as good as the novel." That's I heard that. Wow. Yeah, and I'm like, that's not possible. I that, know what happens in the novel. That novel well, is like 800 fucking pages long. It can't have been that good. Um. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's, she, she went on to, she actually went on to Wikipedia. She, she read how first it asked me if any of my friends had, uh, had uh, reviewed the book, and I said, no, we don't really ever book reviewers on this, on our site, hon. And she's like, oh, okay. And went to Wikipedia to find yeah. out. And she was like, oh, okay, I know now. But you know what I heard? You know what I heard was, I think she dropped this plan. I think actually there was at one point, um, oh, God, I can't remember. I think there was some kind of scandal where one of the books got leaked on the internet before its published date. And like, yeah. I think Stephanie Meyer actually came forward and said, like, well, I was going to write a follow-up to the series, but mm -hmm. since it was leaked, I'm not going to. What it was, it was the very first Twilight book from Edward's point of view. From Edward's, yeah, I heard that. From Edward's perspective, yeah. And that was it. And uh, and it didn't do it. She uh, And she said, well, you know, you, you fucked up, so you can now have what I was going to write, but... You know, you can't print it. You because, can't do anything because with it. There was, here you go. Because it's not in, finished. Because in Twilight, there was so much more going on beyond the scenes that we had to go back and retrace our stuff from Edward's perspective. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you had to know what he was thinking. We had to know what he was thinking when he sat next to her in chemistry class. Because that was he fucking was like, really... Oh, dear God. I hope this is not my love interest. <laughs> really? Okay. Okay. I, I guess I would I'm gonna, so love to eat her brains out. I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up with the following thoughts. The only way to see these movies is with someone who knows completely how bad they are, or if you're watching the riff tracks. That's Watch, it. Wait for the riff tracks. Wait for the riff tracks. Honest to God, because this is so bad. I, I, I actually own... All the Twilight movies, but the only reason I own them is because of the riff tracks, and the riff tracks are so funny. Yeah. But you need, you need that kind of riffing, that kind of, that companionship to survive this type of movie. I still need to get the riff tracks. I've held off on it. Oh, oh, oh you, okay. So you got Paranormal Activity, which is a legitimately good movie, but you didn't get the riff tracks for Twilight. You fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> well, the problem, the problem is, right. I would have to buy Twilight and spend time like, uh, like uh, uh, ripping it from the DVD, and then just being like, "Am I really doing this? Am I really?" I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no shame. Well, hey, everybody... uh, I, my wife bought the movie, so I just and bought hey, the riff tracks. <laughs> now, let's be fair here. I like Paranormal Activity. I still think Mika's a douchebag, but as a horror film, I still liked it. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I hope this was a comprehensive review of my exposure to Twilight. I, I honestly, I'm going to look back, I'm probably never going to watch this video again because I'm so drunk right now. It's going to fucking, I'm going to be so fucking embarrassed. You know what, Spoonie? You know what? I was there at the roast of Little Karibo at Yomacon where he was blind, stinking drunk, and he can't remember a damn thing. <laughs> You're doing a lot better. I, well, I, 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 he I was I, just I, yelling out like random sentences like, Give me the microphone! <laughs> Shut up! It's 
funny because he sucks. Did, did you see the video I did for Lil Karibo? I did. That was good work. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Because I, 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 they're like, you need to roast Lil Karibo. I'm like, I don't know what to say. So I just kind of like, I, I just kind of busted his balls for like two minutes. And <laughs> I know. It was funny. Okay, I, that's good. As long as he got a laugh out of it. Um, Maybe he'll post that video one day where uh, the... I, I, I think he is actually handling that. I gave him all the footage from my camera, and he has to edit it all together into, like, one thing. Okay, okay. Well, if you look on YouTube, I think there are, like, clips here and there. Okay, so if you don't know, what happened is at uh, Yumacon, they were doing a list of, uh, roast of Little Karibo. Or Little... Yeah, Little... I, I always call him Little Karibo, but I was like, Little Karibo. But, yeah, they asked me... Uh, Moscow asked me to do a, a roast of the guy. So I did a two-minute roast where I just kind of called him, like, uh, I was like, thank you for being such an inspirational uh, force in the world of internet reviewing, because if you can do it, fucking anyone can do it. <laughs> so st stuff like that. I was just busting his balls. I, I, seriously, I'm like, Lil Karibo, I've been trying to get into Lil Karibo's videos for years now, because I'm such a fan. And I actually feel, I, I, I think at one point he actually agreed to do it, and I backed off because I felt so bad for kind of browbeating him into it. <laughs> I was like, you know what? No, because no, I don't want to. <laughs> um, but yeah, honestly, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged stuff is some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen in my life. I love, I love Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged because that was some of the stuff I used to watch in as a teenager. Was I used to watch Pokemans and and Little Karibo? Uh, not, not. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! And we would just make fun. We basically riff it on the spot, and that's essentially what he's doing here. Is is so brilliant. But anyway, oh um, yeah, he for his rose, he was blind, stinking drunk. Could barely talk. Uh, I'm not sure how the hell he pulled off his uh, his his final roast and speech for himself. But dude, you are so much more comprehensible and able. I to didn't. Do. I probably didn't drink as much as he did. But I honestly, I, I'm probably much more of a lightweight than he is because honestly, he drank half a bottle of vodka. Okay, so he drank way more. I, I drank. Let's see. I drank probably a fifth of the bottle of the whiskey and probably a quarter of the bottle of the rum. That's a lot, but. That's a lot. But, yeah, I've, I've never really been complete. So, anyway, thank you guys for keeping me company tonight. I know you, <laughs> you didn't have to do that. I appreciate it. I love you guys so much. <laughs> well, we love you, too. Guys, stay away from my sister. <laughs> You'd better stay away from my sister. <laughs> I gotta let Oreo. I gotta let Oreo go pee. So I'm gonna end this here and upload it. I'm not even gonna fucking look at it because I don't want to see what I said. <laughs> All right. Thank you, people, for watching. And uh, until please, then, please, please thank Spoony for watching this for for your amusement. Until then, this is Spoony, Juario, and Linkara signing off. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>